Howdy, ladies and gentlemen. And, uh, so, um, yeah. So, I know, like, it said that we have a little bit more time left on the stream and everything like that for the starting phase, but yeah, I started a little late, um, trying to get things set up. I updated Windows last night and it broke OBS, so I had to get all that set up. Um, but anyways, nice to see my rules, nice to see everybody. Hope you guys are going to be enjoying it, and like I was saying, uh, we're going to be joined by Phoenix today. Um, he's also playing the Cradle of Humanity DLC, and Phoenix, are you there, sir? I'm here. Say howdy to the chat. Hey guys. So yeah, today we're going to be looking at Cradle of Humanity Vanilla. Um, I do have a couple mods running, um, so if, I'm just going to go to my extensions real quick. So Cradle of Humanity is on, Better Kill Credits on, uh, Learn All, All the Things is still on. Uh, no Fog is on, but it's broken right now. Um, just mainly because i got a really inferior PC. NPCs Recovered is on, uh, Paint Jobs Galore is on. Sector Satellites and Ship Reverse Engineering is also on. So those are the mods that we're running today. Uh, we are on board one of our car oh, our uh, large Hello. trading transport that I'm using as a carrier. I even named it Poor Man's Carrier. So yeah, I'm looking forward to today. And I'm looking forward to all the things. Hope you guys are too. Now, I do have to admit, I did run the cheat mod early on with this save because of I just want to know where all the Terran sectors were and stuff like that. So I revealed sector map. But I don't have any trade information or anything like that until I actually send people out there. But we're um, mainly enemies with everyone. So if I go to my uh, personal information here and let's look at the... Uh, where is it? There, factions and Relations. So, yeah, like, we're Argon Federation, negative 15, Ministry of Finance, negative 15, Zyoth Patriarch, negative 15, Antigon Republic, negative 10. So, yeah, it's like, we're not friends with pretty much anyone. So, that's the thing for today. Alright, so, what we're going to be doing today is mission offers, no, no, we're not going to do that. Uh, let's see, maintenance duty, sector active. All right, so let's get flying out. So I mainly want to see what the campaign's like, stuff like that. So it's kind of a sneak peek for our new Star Wars playthrough that we're going to be doing. Uh, and I'm going to be trying to do Star Wars with the uh, new DLC, even though it's not recommended. So those of you that are, do have the X4 Star Wars mod, and you also have Creators of Humanity, do not try to play Star Wars mod with uh, with X4, with the Cradle of Humanity DLC. Just, just, just don't. Just because I'm doing it doesn't mean that somebody else should be doing it. But yeah, Star Wars mod isn't on right now. We're looking at it vanilla, like I said, because of the Xenon are heavily buffed. With the Star Wars mod. But yeah, we're on board, like I said, on our poor man's carry. And I love this bridge. I cannot wait to see what Ship Designs uh, Mick puts out with this kind of bridge. So it's going to be amazing. I can't wait to see what the XL ships look like for bridges, too. Other thing is, too... Uh, we're sitting on 19.2 million, and we also have some Baldrics. Uh, they're the little trading transports. Already got them set up for auto trade, which is nice. So we're making some good monies. Um, but we're also, if I go to back to the player information for the uh, factions and relations, uh, where is it? Terran, yeah. Terran Protector, we're at 18. So we're two points off from getting the uh, uh, capital ship building module license. So, that's going to be nice, being able to get the capital ship licenses and stuff. Now, I don't have a SATA either. Are you having to restart the Star Wars series? Okay, so, uh, Sunday stream, my rules, Sunday stream. Um, we're going to be, the name of the episode is going to be All or Nothing, and it's going to be the last episode for that specific series. So we're going to throw everything we got at the Death Watch, and we're going to try to kill the Death, Death Watch as quickly as we can, or as best as we can. If we lose everything, we lose everything, because it's going to be the last episode. Uh, after that, we're going to be doing a new Star Wars playthrough that I'll be starting with the episode on Monday, uh, with a brand new start, brand new Star Wars overhaul, everything like that. So, looking forward to that. But it's just because of I can't get the compatibility of Cradle of Humanity, and just... Like I've said before in previous uh, stream, live streams and episodes, 
I've always wanted to focus on doing campaign content, so this is also seeing how viable the campaign actually is. Entering Mars. All right, so Phoenix, what all have you uncovered so far with the DLC that you found intriguing? Uh, don't know yet. As I've kind of reset my, restarted my progress all over. So, for those of you that don't know, uh, Phoenix was running the No Xenon mod and the updated No Xenon mod, and that's when I told him that, uh, yeah, the Terran campaign is just nothing but fighting the Xenon. And he's like, oh, yeah, that could be a problem. So he restarted his, uh, his campaign completely for this today's stream. He's also live. Uh, let me give, him, give me one second here. I'm not going to have any audio for a second. Uh, let's go pull up Twitch. Give me one second. So I'm going to drop his link uh, in the chat. So if you guys want to watch him, um, you can also set up a multi-channel display if you wish. Um, so we can watch multiple POVs because like I said, he is joining us today. So give me one second here. One more second. There we go. And let me pin this. All right, message pinned. All right. So um, like I was saying, it's like if you guys also want to see his POV, uh, like I said, he is also streaming. He's live on Twitch. So if you guys want to see what um, he's showcasing, or see from his perspective from a fresh vanilla start on uh, Cradle of Humanity. But yeah, I'm really intrigued by the ships and everything too, guys. Like, some of these ships look fantastic. Like, this is a large freighter. And it looks like a, like a luxury yacht. Uh, it's got a storage capacity of 20 uh, small ships. I'm pretty sure it's 20 small ships. But we've got uh, five Gladiuses on board, and we're also being escorted by two um, two um, M ships, two M class ships, Katana and a Geon. No, that's not it. We have. I think it's a mineral. Yeah. Okay. So this is what we have right here. And 40 small ship capacity. So that's why I named it Poor Man's Carrier. 40 small ship capacity. Uh, so another thing too is like we're running uh, paint schemes with the... With the mod as well. Because like you guys saw that it was like gray and red for the purchase. But we're running uh, paint jobs. I like the blue. I really do. It's like I was trying to find a good paint job the other day, uh, yesterday, and I was like, you know what? This blue really, really looks cool, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with it. Uh, this blue also came with the DLC. It's called Utopia. Um, there's also a red and white version of this. Uh, that's the Soul Set. So there's like three new paint... Oh, sorry. There's nine new paint jobs that came with the DLC, but uh, three of them are in this color palette with white and then a color. So it's uh, blue and red... Um, sorry, blue and white, red and white, and purple and white. Yeah, we're heading over to the campaign mission. So I'm sitting here doing uh, campaign missions, but apparently I've got a mission type that I've never even heard of with an X4 Phoenix. So uh, the mission's called Maintenance Duty, and it's a campaign mission, but it says, uh, with your false identity... Uh, fed into the databases of the Sakaris Pioneers, you will be able to join a team of engineers assigned to carry out crucial repairs on a top secret facility. So, like, when I was getting the mission and everything, Phoenix, like, uh, the girl was telling me, it's like, listen, it's like, try not, make sure you use lots of discretion, try not to, uh, um, basically, uh, get caught and let them know that, like, you're working for the Terran Protectorate and everything. I was like, uh, okay. So, I'm really curious to see how this all plays out. Uh, is there a red and black, Miles? Yes. Um, so, with the paint jobs galore, and I cheated in the paint jobs too because I couldn't get them to work. Okay. I couldn't get them to work very well, so I cheated in those too. But if I go to redesign here, so here's all this paint jobs that I just uh, basically gave myself the cheat engine. So, yeah, there's black and red. 
but that's already been in the game, so like, that's not a new paint job. Uh, there's also like Foundation X, which is a pre-order bonus for X4. Uh, then there's Rising Star, which is like white and silver. I mean, sorry, red and silver. Um, I think there's another red and black if I can find it. Yeah, active uh, distraction and Verbillion. Yeah, what we're running is Utopia. So here's Soul Set, which is the uh, one of the new ones, and then you also have uh, Voracious. I'm sorry, Violacious, which is the purple I was talking about. And they come in camera patterns too, so like if I wanted to, I could run camo patterns if I wanted to. But I just think that looks nice and clean. The Utopia, I think it looks really clean. And I think I'm gonna turn down the audio just slightly. There we go. Spicy guys. Yeah, we got our traders going and everything like that. So I'm hoping that we can actually get some good. Uh, tries to be discreet, being a master freighter. Well, then again, like being bringing a master freighter instead of showing up in a fighter, I think is, you know, a little bit different. Because of who knows, that I'm just not a passenger, you know. It's like they have no idea if I'm just a passenger. Well, at least that's my thoughts. So, we'll see. And there goes another uh, blue paint. Oh, actually, no, that's our, that's our uh, ships. The Gion and the Katana. Like I said, I think that blue just, comes, just came out really, really clean. That's why I liked it. It's a really clean color scheme. So, on the Gion, he's got six... Uh, Six turrets. I've got two bolts, two beams, and two dumb fire rockets. And dumb fire rockets are set to capital ships only. So in case we ever get in trouble with uh, maybe some like a Xenon K or something, we've got him around. Now let's see if we can't try to find our katana. Because katana's pretty cool looking. I like the katana a lot. Yeah, there he is. Yeah, so this is the katana. He's got four forward firing weapons and two turrets up top with a bolt and a beam. Not to mention, it's got a really cool looking bridge. So far, I'm really enjoying the DLC. Because, I mean, I played it literally pretty much all day yesterday. So we've got a lot of trade transport sitting out here. Just sitting. Hopefully he finds a new trade soon. So just sitting there. Can't remember if I actually had another mod that I was looking at for fixing trade transports, but who knows by this point. I think that was the mission I was on before I went to restart my game actually. Uh the one that I'm doing? Well, I know the last mission I was on before I reset it was um, go, for, go go be careful and be, try to be discreet sort of thing. So you can't be much further ahead in the campaign mission than me. Yeah, I'm not very far in campaign was because I've just been trying to build rep. Like I'm at uh, 18, but be 19. Like that was my focus was just money and uh, rep. Yeah. It's one of the reasons I'm quite happy to reset because I've only really played my game like the first six hours, the other two. I'd restart because I used to know Xenon mod and, all, and I'm unsure whether it would work if I turned it off. Yeah, because I mean, like, the whole campaign for the Terran Protector is literally just fighting Xenon. So, like, all the stories and stuff that I've been hearing is like, uh,. Uh, you can't go into Savage Spur 2, like the jump gate has basically been deactivated for anyone else other than a Xenon ship or a Yaki ship. So in order to gain access to it is by completing the campaign to get into Savage Spur 1. Uh, same thing goes for like the uh, capital ships too, so like if you want to look at the Terran shipyard for example, or actually just the Terran wharf, uh, there's two ships that are locked currently. Uh, in both ships, it says the ship is no longer offered for sale to third parties, so it's locked behind uh, campaign missions. Yeah, it's the uh, Sin Destroyer and the Asgard Battleship. 
what? It's, it's these ten inch, large ten inch ships. Yes. Right, because the medium ten inch ships are all accessible. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just the shipyard is what you have to look at in order to purchase them. But uh, something that's cool is that you can actually send a, uh, a scout through the jump gate into uh, the moon and Earth. But you physically can't fly there because they'll warn you, like, listen, you're entering a restricted sector. Please turn around now. But the AI can go straight through. That's rude. What's well, rude? That you're not allowed, but your your well, pilots allowed, are. But our minions can. Yeah. So this is the ship that I'm actually looking at purchasing. Is this one? It's like this is the one that I really want. But like we were just saying, it's locked behind campaign. So I'm really looking forward to this ship because this ship looks amazing, especially if you were to compare it to the, like the Osaka. Because the Osaka's got two forward firing guns and what three turrets, and then you look at this Sin destroyer and it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight with uh, three forward firing guns. That thing is insane for vanilla stats. The special view to compare this thing to, say, like the uh, the Argon uh, Destroyer, the Behemoth. Like, this thing is absolutely nutty. And the Asgard is just even nuttier. Because it's like 16 turrets. And they're like all large class, and it's got two forward firing guns, but uh, there's also another weapon slot right here in the center, guys, for the uh, Asgard beam cannon. Uh, yes. So, um, not all Terrans, my rules. So, like, um, if you're an outsider, you can enter into Getsufune, and you'll have a dialogue prompt. Uh, if you were to enter uh, the asteroid belt, and once you go into the asteroid belt, then you'll get a um, a important mission. And you do that important mission, and it's basically the start of the campaign for Terrans. If you go with the Terran start, just without the tutorial part for finding like the uh, satellites and stuff, gotcha. because of uh, the whole campaign is all about this station right here, the Soulborn I've been Militia able to, out um, outpost. Fly about for all the sectors. So the Soulborn Militia Outpost yeah, there, is from Neptune. You can access the other um, parts of the sector map. Say that again. You can access the other parts of the sector map. I found from Getsa Food there. Yeah. Um, Neptune. There's a route to Brennan's Triumph. Yeah, that's it. Um, so what I was saying is, um, when you start doing the actual, uh, quest for the Soul, so the like Soul Militia outpost, outpost and stuff, stuff like that, uh, they talk about how they're trying to extend outwards and try to involve other factions, um, in all the sectors that are part of the jump gate system, uh, to do stuff. Yeah, it's just the moon and earth is the two that you're locked out of. My yeah, I was kind of explaining that to him uh, through voice, um, but uh, like um, he's wondering if like you go with another start or something like that. What's going on, Ryotaro? So your ship's still alive, but all your escorts are gone. I don't know. You had you had a vindicator and a mobilizer and a victory two following you around, right. Captain. Because I've. I've but they're all dead. Thing. So the reason why you're hearing somebody else, uh, Ray Taro, uh, is uh, this is kind of a co-op stream because we're be learning together. To pick this up, if they accept anyone. So I assume that would be open to other faction starts. Yeah, and that's something I was explaining. Is um, it's all about the Soulborn Militia Outpost, which is an outward way of Terrans trying to involve other races. Um, into uh, basically doing stuff for Terra and the protection of Terra. Yeah, exactly that. <laughs> My rules, like, this isn't, like, we're not going to have a series on, like, the actual uh, Cradle of Humanity DLC. Um, we're just saying farewell to the Warhammer series and uh, 
just the best way that we can figure how to do it is because we've both been playing vanilla Cradle of Humanity, and he was really in the mood to just play it anyways. Like, uh, even though like we both really want to play Warhammer right now, but the thing is, though, is that I'm just getting rid of everything else that's just not X4. Uh, I want to focus all my content on X4. It's like I had a long conversation with Mick about it. Uh, the lead developer for Star Wars uh, Inner Worlds. And I also got to apologize to you guys. Uh, I did make a little reference uh, that popped up on the screen for uh, when I was talking about the Arquintans uh, and covering that for my latest episode uh, of X4 Star Wars. And uh, the model wasn't from El Roddy. Um, and I even put on there, the Vindicator was courtesy of El Roddy. And that's where I misread. It's like when I was recording it, I already said it. Like, I couldn't just, like, bleep it out. So, uh, I just put that little text there. Because uh, Shula made me wall over And I was like, yeah, I know. That's why I put that the Vindicator was courtesy of El Roddy. It's like I, I already said it during recording. It's like I tried to change it. So, anyways. Golly, the ship is slow. But then again, like all the ships are slow. It's like I'm so used to doing travel speed at like 6,000 meters a second from the X4 Star Wars mod. Getting a fighter here on Cradle of Humanity, it's like 2,018 meters a second. It's like, come on. Can I just get there just a little quicker? <laughs> so that's been entertaining. And there's actually a lot of things that have spoiled me from playing X4 Star Wars. And, uh, it's mainly just the maneuverability of ships. I got lucky with some of the jobs in the Zealand ship by now. Yeah, the Zenon are quite aggressive. But the other thing is, too, is that, uh, since it's I vanilla, it's like you don't have to play against the buffed Xenons, so, like, they're quite easy to kill, even in the Kukri. We ever do something with Warhammer Streams again? Maybe my rules. Uh, it really just depends on... Um, basically the workload. Because of... Like, I've been trying so hard to get uh, certain content out uh, day by day by day. And still see, uh, and still hang out with my friends um, on our private Discord uh, every other day. And trying to do stuff with uh, our community and community events and helping Fiac with his community, with his uh, Valheim community server. Like, there's just so much on my plate. It's like I really just want to uh, make it easier on myself and focus on one thing and one thing that I enjoy doing content about instead of like waking up and like, oh god, XCOM 2 today, okay, and then deal with the launcher for two and a half hours of it constantly crashing trying to get recording for it. So it's like I, there's just. It's just that it's a lot on my plate for several different hours for streams, stuff like that. It's like uh, playing with uh, uh, playing with Phoenix. It's like I love playing with Phoenix, but setting up for that time, like that's the best time that we can stream together for Warhammer because of the five-hour difference. And he works early mornings. So the reason why I'm trying to put all these things to rest is so that way I can focus on one thing, uh, get all get more content out week by week, and make sure that you guys have content to watch from me that's enjoyable and very informational. And you guys can get all the information of patch updates, um, new ship models, for example, and everything X4 related. Whether it's Cradle of Humanity or it's Star Wars mod. So that, that's going to be my focus. So just like Phoenix was just saying, um, we probably won't see another Warhammer stream again until probably Warhammer 3. And Warhammer 3, we might be doing some crossover stuff with uh, Fioc. Um, there's also a, a Twitch partner that joined our uh, uh, Discord. I, don't, I actually don't know what his Twitch username is, but uh, I just know him as Jinx as his Discord username. But uh, he's probably going to be doing Warhammer co-op streams with Phoenix Jet. Because of he just got into RTSs, and I've been playing Warhammer with him on the side, so... Yeah, it's like that's that's the thing, my girls. Like, I can I'm, there's no way I can burn on an X4. It's like I love X4 to death. It's like uh, there's times that like I've gotten burnt out on War Thunder. There's times I've been gotten I've been burnt out on like several other games. Like I never feel that way with X4 ever. Even with the Star Wars mod, like there's just so much to do. Like I can always change different variations so that way like I can make it feel fresh and entertaining for myself and not just you guys. So. 
Like, that's the one thing and the reason why I want to focus in on export content. So, we'll see as it goes. And I think our travel speed on this is faster than being in a fighter. I'd almost swear on it. Yeah, it is. 3,711. So, like, this is as fast as we can go. And I think the fastest travel speed that we have is on the Katana. It's like, I just want to be there already. It's like, the stream's been going on for 30 minutes. It's like, I've only gotten two systems. Ugh, what I'd give for SATA. So let's see the katana real quick. Uh, let's see. Do you know our katana? Yeah, 4,767 travel speed. But look at this. Boost speed of 6,257. It boosts faster than it can travel. Um, what? Like, that's a thing? Like, that's an actual thing. So, Phoenix, you know what I just found? What? The katana... Its travel speed is 4,767. You don't want to know what its boost speed is? Faster. I'm out. 6,257. I'm out. In what world does that make... Day. Yeah, in what world does that make any sense? In what world? I've got a feeling that could be backwards. I yeah? I know ships seem to have a load of... Uh, uh, ow. Ow. Well, Tanks have a load of I won't say anything if you cheat in a SATA drive. <laughs> yeah. I mean I'm 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 quite tempted to do that. But then again, it's like it's just a chill stream today and saying farewell to the Warhammer streams. I'm sure and I'm sure that people do want to see Cradle of Humanity DLC uh, and see the actual content of it. Because, um, like, I know um, Dogsbox, uh, Patreon for Mick on the X4 Star Wars Discord. It's like, he is interested to see what content there is in X4 uh, Cradle of Humanity. The one thing that he doesn't like is the ships. And I'm about to show you what I mean by said ships. He said, kill it with fire, was the words that he gave me. And yeah, it's the Honshu. It has a sail. In space. He hates it. But then again, it's like, I didn't mention to him, like, these are actually solar panels and not just like, you know, like a solar wind sail or something, but it looks like a contemporary sail. And he's like, yeah, I hate it. So, <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. But yeah, I am looking forward to getting, like, to Tokyo. And definitely, it's like the Sin and the uh, Osaka. I'm looking forward to getting these ships. These ships look very, very cool. I just don't know where the cockpit is on those things. Like, is that the cockpit back there in the back? It's like, I'm, I'm curious to see what these bridges look like. Don't know if you guys are, because, like, I'm in love with this bridge. I mean, this bridge is fantastic. I love the whole, like, uh, Mass Effect y feel it has. Because, like, you got your pot, like, your navigation down there, and it's like the captain's helm is overseeing everything else. Like, kind of gives me, like, a Normandy type feel. <laughs> nah, Doss, I don't have Corona. It's not Corona. You know what it is? It's called Camel. And then again, it's like, I woke up with one this morning so like I got up at 10.30 so like literally an hour ago is when I got up so I live in the mountains we've had moisture for the past uh, 48 hours so I wish they went more industrial for ships and less like the Empire from Elite Dangerous here's the thing though my rules I hate the Imperial ships in Elite Dangerous because of all they are, are just planes like they're not unique or uh, very well crafted in my opinion. It's like all they did was they took real world aircraft and then put lights on them with some geometric shapes added in here and there. It's like that's all they did. 
Now, I think this is actually done right with the luxury type look that um, Elite Danger should have went with, with what Frontier Developments should have went with. Because of, take this ship, for example. It has elegance, it has beauty, it has design, but it's simple and simplistic, but at the same time, it's subtle. So, like, the, the wings folding and everything, it's like, the wings are a little bit too long, in my opinion, but still. Um, it's like, if I go into the cockpit of this, this ship, I mean, it's elegance done right, in my opinion. Instead of just having bright lights on top of carbon fiber, and it's like, oh yeah, this is luxury. It's like, no, get out of here. Looks like a rave club. At least that's just my personal opinion. It's like, I, I, I really like the bridges uh, in with the Terran ships. I think they look phenomenal. And if you really want to see something hideous with uh, the Cradle of Humanity DLC and Terran ships in specific, this is the ship that I hate the most. The Okinawa. Yeah, the Okinawa. Let's, let's, yeah, let's forget this thing exists. The bridge is over here on the port side. It has six turrets on the starboard side and only two turrets on the port side. Entering Neptune. It's like, in all honesty, and I had this conversation with another friend, is they should have made the ship like this and the bridge rotate it horizontally 90 degrees and make the top up here with these six turrets and then the bottom with these two turrets and make it like symmetrical like this being sideways like rotate this whole thing 90 degrees I think that would have been a much better design choice for this uh, ship rather than the asymmetrical way that it is it's like I because here's the thing if you're on the bridge of this ship and you look out your right side where all your turrets are it's like oh yeah we're going to see combat from first person it's like all I see is the rest of my ship and some light effects and it's like <laughs> at least that's my, my philosophy on that thing Oop, Yaki. I wonder if our guns are going to be firing. See if we can get our ships to engage. Yeah, let's go ahead and tell our boys to engage. Nope, I just want you to attack all targets in range. Katana, attack all targets in range. And then we're going to deploy fighters. And attack all targets in range. Alright. So this is the Yaki. Yeah, I won't deny that, Dust Institute. I will not deny that at all. Split definitely does have the best looking large freighter. I don't know that Argons isn't bad looking. I won't definitely say Argons is the best either. Golly. Like he went to another sector with that boost. There's still more. Yeah, there is. Alright. So what our fighters can do. So this is the Gladius. And I've got them outfitted for the four proton um, 
multi cannons. I can't remember what they're called. I think it's called Proton Barrage. But yeah, they they do some serious impressive work. I do like these fighters. Like I said, I think the wings are just a little long. So I think they could have been shortened to about like right here and it looked a little better. Yeah, more functional than accessories. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Dawson Institute. And that's my problem with them. Is because of they went for such like straight functionality. Like, I don't like their large and extra large design for choices for their ships. Mainly their combat ships. So like the Behemoth, the Colossus. Not a fan. I do like their auxiliary ship. Their auxiliary ship looks fantastic for what it is. Because it has that industrial type look, which is great. Yeah, the eye it lo does look really, really good. And yeah, I like the Raptor, but you know what? They're actually, is my favorite ship thus far uh, for vanilla um, X4, and that's actually the Rattlesnake. I love the Rattlesnake. Just because the sheer amount of firepower that thing has, it's great. Alright, so I think we have arrived... Yeah, there's the Oberth. So do I comment? Like, or do I go over there and land? Let's recall everybody. Come over here and dock. And we're going to remove. Okay, so they're already heading back over here. All right, so we're gonna go over to our Gladius. We found something out here. Alrighty. The one thing I do have to say about the Xenon, though, is like I just feel like their ships kind of have like too much of a uh, geth. All right, Phoenix. Well, thanks for joining us, man. And uh, I'll talk at you later. I'm sure. See you, guys. Alrighty, so what I was going to be saying though is, as soon as I can find where every two from internal storage, there we go. Swing coming up at, alright. Um, the Xenon ships just look like they're caught, like, literally taken from the Geth from Mass Effect. Like, that, that, that's just me. So like, that's the way I feel about them. One of the DLC that allows us to play the Xenon, like a glitch that split uh, from the main faction. Yeah, that'd be interesting. I think they could probably do it because they're planning on what, like two more DLCs for uh, X4 Foundations. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm pretty sure they're uh, coming out with two more DLCs. Hello there. All right, so let's hop in here. Yeah, this fighter is just so slow. I love the fact that they're like instant travel drives, but at the same time, like it's just so slow. Okinawa, research. You're late. Fortunately for you, we're having technical difficulties. I looked over your file, and I must say it made for interesting reading. Know this. You will have to impress me in person if you want any chance of getting an assignment worthy of your apparent skill set. While we wait for departure, perhaps you can showcase your resourcefulness. I'm in need of an item not often found on the general market. Should you find it, you will most certainly have piqued my interest. Or send over some details. Okay. So I love how I'm supposed to be a maintenance guy, but yet he's like, hey, I need you to go shopping for me. AGI processor. Uh, I think I already have one of those in my inventory, don't I? No, I don't. Yeah, I do. Right there. Crafting words. AGI processor. Deliver to where? To here, right? Open briefing. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't say where I deliver it to. Um, because I have it on my in my inventory. I just looked. Yeah, the K has a lot of blind spots. Like I literally sat underneath it. And it's like, yeah, it's got two turrets down there, but like if you um, sit behind the hangover, like, in the back, 
Yeah, like it can't shoot at you. Demonic chanting of cheating in a state of drive intensifies. Oh, that's funny. Good job. You're just in time. We're about ready to disembark. Wonder if I can. Oh, nope. All right. That's not a surprising Dawson Institute. I was like, I don't actually know much about the lore. Towards a facility very important to the future of our people. It recently suffered structural damage due to some unknown spatial distortion. That's why you've been brought in. Our resources are limited, but our people are exceptional. I welcome you to the team. Unfortunately, our limited resources force us to make a minor detour. A number of satellites have been targeted by Xenon. While we managed to intercept the attackers, several satellites have been left in a state of disrepair. I will assign a number of satellites for you to return to working order. Let's get to work. Satellites? What is it? Gladius. Can I help? Goodbye. Alright. So we've got three satellites to repair. So that one's closer. Satellite. Alright, so that's the furthest one. Satellite. Alright. They should really make Sad Drive viable, even if it is really expensive. I completely agree. It's like having to craft it is just a pain. I'm quite sure this sensor net is also used to keep tabs on Terran Protectorate activity in their sectors. Go ahead and repair it, but we may take action later. So I don't even have the upgraded repair laser either. One down, two to go. Satellite. Nope, that one's the further one. Let's go that one. There we go. Dropping out of SATA in three, two, one. Ooh, came in a little too fast. Alright. Now it's control D. Gotta repair this one. I really wish Vanilla Combat weren't such a clone. It looks bland. The mage is far too short for everything. Captures have a hard time destroying a swarm of drones. No wonder most people get BRO. Yeah, I'm not going to deny that either. But then again, it's like BRO um, also brings some of its own drawbacks because of, by doing so, uh, fighters aren't nearly as prominent. Like, uh, they're not as successful anymore. With VRO, it's like it's basically just cap ship on cap ship action, and like whatever's larger is gonna win, kind of thing. Because of VRO is basically the basis standpoint for where all balancing for X4 Star Wars comes from. Alright, I got one more satellite to do. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I'm spoiled too, man. But then again, it's like I want to get an idea of what like what the campaign's like before I start doing it with Star Wars ships, because 
at the same time, it's like, if when we do a new series, like, we're not going to be touching the Terran stuff for a while. And I'm also thinking about starting with Corporate Sector Authority as our start instead of the Empire. And the reason why I'm thinking about going with the Corporate Sector Authority start is because of we're not going to be very hostile versus a lot of people. And on top of that is we'll be able to basically trade with whoever we want, build our trade empire up, not have any enemies, and then when we start getting our money across, then we go in and start doing some of the Terran missions. So that's the plan. How it works, I have no idea, because of Xenon are going to capture that that uh, sector so quick. Getsu Fune. Like they're going to be in Getsu Fune so quick. Like there's just times that I hate how aggressive Xenon are. And this goes back to me wishing that uh, Shulo actually uh, um, released it as a submod like I asked him to a long time ago versus forcing in the update for the Xenon. But I digress. And there we go. Docking granted. All right, let's go talk to Rick here. Move all orders. And I want to drop a satellite of my own. I was going to say, where's the sector satellites? <laughs> Alright, I'm going to switch you from Sol Mars. I'm going to switch you to Neptune. Select. Yeah, Sol Neptune. Okay. And the MRA should be selling like hotcakes because that's like the most uh, one item over here. Alright, imagine you come in with a fleet of Star Destroyers to help the Terrans. Yeah, that's basically what my latest episode for Star Wars X4 is. Uh, not the live stream, but um, my regular episodes I do weekly. Uh, that's basically what I did, and I couldn't save the station at all. To give you guys a comparison, is like I did the same station mission in vanilla yesterday. The station survived at 87% health. I do it with the Imperials. The Imper my Imperial fleet didn't even touch the station. Just the Xenon shooting the station alone, they killed the station with two minutes left for the holdout timer. They completely destroyed the station. I don't even know if the game understands how to handle that. Because it's a quest-specific station, and if I'm not going to be able to dock on it anymore, like, that, that quest line's pretty much forked. Have you seen that Xenon U-Mod Woo? That thing is cool. I have no idea what you're talking about. Like, zero idea. If you can pull up the uh, Steam uh, workshop link and drop it here in the chat, I'll take a look at it. But uh, while you're pulling that up, I'm going to go take my uh, five-minute break real quick. And I'll be right back. Because we're going to be docking over here anyways. We're just waiting on our ship to dock anyway. So I'm going to take a five-minute break, and I'll be right back. So don't go anywhere, guys.
All right. Oh, come on, stream. There we go. Okay, stabilized. All right, sweet. All right. So let's see here. Uh, somebody. I'm sorry, Bullock. I, I I don't know how to speak Russian. I apologize. My rules. There's something about the scene on you, sadly, that I don't know if it's a mod by itself. Um, is it, are you sure it's not uh, the one of the XR ship uh, ship pack mods? Because there's one that actually adds a Xenon ship, and I think that might actually be it. Um, I played with the RO a few times. Um, I like it, but like I said, it's like it kind of makes smaller ships absolutely redundant. It's like the combat's great. Uh, like when you get in dog fights with fighters and such, but like when you're when you're in a fighter and there's a bunch of enemy capital ships, like you can't do a thing, and that's my problem with the RO. Now that that's out of the way, we can finally get on with our primary task. I can hardly wait. A lot of cutscenes with this campaign. I like it. Docking complete. And here we are. As you know, this is a high security facility. Just because you have clearance to do your job, it doesn't mean you can go wandering off or touch everything. It is currently unmanned and in safe mode until we can repair the damage and ensure no further anomalies occur. Do you know what causes those anomalies? I'm not at liberty to divulge such information, but rest assured you will be safe to perform your duties. We begin by repairing the external structure. Get into your spacesuits and prepare to be guided to your assigned positions. All right, well, this is going to be interesting. Um, and the thing is, my role is like, you're not going to disappoint me. It's like, I'm really hard to disappoint. <laughs> I'm really hard to disappoint, that's for sure. Alright, so I've got, what, four points to repair? Kind of wish I had an upgraded spacesuit. Right? But I think it's pretty cool with the player HQ. Cylinder shaped mothership. And I can't remember if I've actually fought the year or not. Because like I said, uh, I used to run a lot of the XR Rebirth uh, ships pack. Um, and like the main reason why I was using them is mainly because of uh, they added a... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should have brought, bought a bomb, brought a bomb launcher and just like put bombs everywhere. Oh, that would have been entertaining. But um, uh, there's a destroyer that's added to the Argon that's fantastic. Oh my god, it's just covered in guns. Like they're all medium turrets, but still, it's just covered in guns. I loved that thing. Uh, why can't I shoot? Oh, because I'm boosting. Duh. Alright, that one's repaired. Two more points. Spacesuit. What's a Xenon O? I think that's actually the one, because, like, the U doesn't sound familiar, but the O, I think that one is the one that I actually saw. I have no idea what's going on with this laser. Like, I can't aim it at all. Like... There we go. We're picking up strange readings again. You better get back to the ship. 
I'm going as fast as I can. Oh god. Um. Uh. What is this? Some large artificial structure. So this is what was on the other side of the tear. It does seem that our investigation has led to some potentially groundbreaking discovery. Assistant? Assistant? Can you hear me? Oh. It seems that they were either vaporized or proof that they lived themselves. Hmm. And what is this? You there. Are you all right? My name is Bozo. <laughs> oh, Bozo. Oh, man. This is hilarious. Castro, okay. Wait, when did I get the upgraded spacesuit? Anybody else notice that? I went from 8 meters a second boost speed to 35. hoping you're gonna grab me oh man come on come on come on, come on. stop there we go it appears you are sufficiently safe well howdy there alien friend in assuming that you have some connection to this station I have already begun to remotely interface with its systems and a bit of gain significant access so many questions I would like asked, but unfortunately, it seems I must go. You see, I am not currently supposed to be working on this project. It appears that I am at a disadvantage and find myself entrusted stewardship of the station. Ha! For all I know, you are an enemy agent already privy to the inner workings of this facility. Please do not use it for the various purposes while I am absent. Alright, so now I have a standard blueprint, plan built, and hopefully it doesn't actually, wait, whoa, those are new, that's pretty cool, alright, oh my god, why don't I just put this on there? you fit oh that's why you won't fit okay so why won't you fit now let's go with the base then all right so let's try this again now you'll fit there we go that's better Alright, confirm module changes. Oh my god, really? Alright. Close. Don't tell me I'm going to buy my own building and fly them all the way out here. Alright. Yeah, this is the, the player HQ. You... Please, oh my god, he doesn't even have satellites or anything like that. 
to have you dock at poor man's carrier. I'll get the poor man's carrier out here. Like a year and a half later. That's all long, that's how long it's gonna take, so it'll be fine. We need to find a builder. Uh this is an equipment dock mm, one sector over, right? No. Scale plate packed. Shipyard. Tlaudi Wharf. But I don't know if I'm gonna be able to dock there. So I'm pretty sure most of these uh, sectors are hostile. Most of these stations are hostile anyways. I think we're at like negative 15. Ministry of Finance. Tlaudi Company is negative 5. Okay, so we can do stuff in Tlaudi but not the Ministry of Finance. Good to know. Alright, so let's see here. We need to find a builder. <laughs> yeah. Just go through the sector and just completely uh, take over all comm waves on every single frequency and every single channel and just play nothing but Rickroll. never going to give you up on every single frequency. That'd be hilarious. Ah, there we go. Sweet, we're done. So far, I'm going to have this guy explore while we're waiting on that builder to get in. Alright, so plan build and then manage by offers. Accept estimate. And there we go. Close. Alright. So let's see what's going on over here. If only I would have uh, hired one of these. <laughs> that would have been funny. Wait for them to fly all the way out of here. Still going to have them uh, ex have the ship explore out here because we need to figure out everything that's going on over here. And another thing, too, is I can actually just tell it to go dock at that station and get some advanced satellites. That's what we're going to do instead. Let's go over here and upgrade repair at. What are we running anyways? Are those split engines? Yeah, we are running split engines. Why are we running split engines? What? Alright. Well, that's a thing. And yeah, we're definitely going to go with those shields. What else do we have on here? Let's get the police scanner, targeting uh, computer extension. What are we running for weapons? Pulse laser. Mark II. Alright. It's actually not a bad weapon. Much rather have the uh, bolt repeater, but. Alright, so we're going to get some advanced satellites. Not that many. Let's get like five. Crew. Yeah, we got crew. Alright. Add to shopping list. Confirm order. And then we're also going to redesign this thing. And let's go with our Utopia there. Install. Yay! Looks so good. I like it. Alright. So we're just waiting on that builder to do his thing. And for the traders to do their thing. Because this thing is definitely not going to be done by the time this stream's over with. I like the Ted Lottie st style of just stealing crap from other factions. Well, see, that's the thing is that like I'm pretty sure one of the next DLCs for X4 is going to be uh, uh, the Boron, 
which is what Bozo Ta is. Is there a reason why we're jumping down here for us? I'm about to just take over. Yeah, I'm just gonna take over. Cause he's taking the long way around. As soon as he can get out of the way. There he goes. Alright, I need... No, I'm not going that way. That way is so long. Technically it's shorter, but I'd rather just go four jumps instead of like 12 jumps. Because it wants me to go all the way through there, right? It wants me to jump down here, jump over this way, jump over this way, jump over this way, jump over that way. I'd rather just go one, two, three, four, five, and go up that way. Oh, wait, no, no. Actually, no, it's right. It's actually right. I should go that way. Because I'm just so used to X4 and uh, not having super highways, the super highways in here. It's like, what am I thinking? Gotta have the super highway. Yeah, yeah, he was, my rules. He absolutely was. He's phasing in and out of reality. Entering system. Nopalia's fortune. Alright, I'm going to make this jump, and then we'll be on the super highway. I completely forgot about the super highway. Like, I'm, I'm just so used to not having the super highway. Yeah, at least you don't need it. You're absolutely right. But uh, the other thing is, too, is that, like, the reason why I got rid of it is just because of it just doesn't fit anywhere in within, like, the lore or, uh, like, space or the environment of Star Wars. So that's why they decided to get rid of it completely. Because it just doesn't fit. Entering system. Unholy retribution. Entering system. Trinity Sanctum. Alright. So we're in Trinity Sanctum and then we're heading to Bright Promise. I think that's where we're stopping, isn't it? Bright Promise? No. Prophet Center Alpha. Entering system. Bright Promise. Wonder where the Bounty Hunters Guild station is. <laughs> Actually, that's all I need to get to is the Tawadi. Entering system. Uh, Prophet Center Alpha. Equipment dock. Alright. Autopilot. Engage. Autopilot. Disengaged. Docking granted. Alright. Alright, so now we're just going to go ahead and dock, buy the better stuff. Successfully docked. Actually, let's go look at the buy ships. I can't remember what all they Welcome. have here. Welcome. Yeah, I remember that thing being ugly. 
It's not a bad ship, though. I mean, four turrets and two uh, forward firing guns. Like, that's pretty beasty. Yeah, it's like the same thing. Two forward firing guns, four turrets. All right, so we're going to look at the uh, small ships. Buzzard Vanguard. Yeah, remember that thing being crap? I don't remember that thing. And we're running the Kestrel. Oh, yeah, I remember that thing. <laughs> oh, that thing's hilarious. Think about buying one of these, though. All right, anyways. Let's go ahead and upgrade here. And we want the travel. No, we'll go with combat. Combat's fine. All right. We want those. We want those. I got a pulse two laser, and then we're gonna go bang, 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 and oh, Estrel Vanguard. Hello. Hello to you too, sir. Get my upgrade. Give me my upgrade. Cause I want it. Oh uh, yeah, you can remove all orders, son. And Doctor Wait. So they're in Antig Antigone Memorial. So there's still what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven-ish jumps away, maybe eight. Alright. Where's our cue on this? Can't remember how to look at the cue when you upgrade a ship. Anybody else know? Because I really want to get my upgrade in. It's like, I don't know. Alright, so let's do the upgrade and repair it again. Alright, so let's see. Combat Mark 3s. That works. Combat. That works. Shield. Ah, missing shield components. Okay. Alright, so we're just going to stick with the split shield. It's fine. Now, do we have satellite components? Yes, we do. Alright, so let's just get those in. There we go. Now we're upgrading. Just can't change our shield generator. Which is unfortunate. Then again, eventually we're going to sell this thing anyway, so. Alright, so let's see what we're looking like at the station here. They haven't done a thing yet. They haven't done a thing. So I even got max price on. Then again, it also kind of sucks because of the fact that, like, I can't really trade with anybody except for just the Talati. Like, I can't pull out, like, Paranid and, like... I don't know. Can I pull out Paranid? What's my relationship with the Paranid? I wonder. Because Argon's negative 15, yep, yeah, negative 15, negative 15, negative 15. Uh, the only ones that I'm not really have a problem with is Fallen Families, Scale Plate Pact, Talati. 
Man, this is a rough play. Like, this is a really rough start to play as. Alright, so he's done. So let's go back over here, and we're going to drop a advanced satellite here. Advanced satellite here. And advanced satellite here. And then I just want one here. And right here. And that should work. Imagine if the station get the asteroid pulled through with it. Ooh, yeah, that would have been bad. Who knows how fast that thing would have just spiraled through space. I really like this new paint job that came with the, D the DLC, the Utopia. So clean looking. So pretty much, well, I, need, I need to answer my other question. Pretty sure you can't, but I just want to look anyways. Yeah, that's what I thought. Build dock area. Love to, but no one's bringing me any resources either. I might have to build um, a couple of trade transports up here. Yeah, yeah, you're not wrong. My rules. I just wish that we could. I just wish we could move it again. It's like I don't like it being in the center of Grand Exchange One. That's just a terrible, terrible spot for it. Alright, so we're going to go buy ships, medium, and then I need, is it the turn or is it the vulture? Which one? Vulture, okay. And then we want to go with a low preset. Entering system. Unholy and then we want, like, four. And you're missing whole parts. Of course you're missing whole parts. Just build me what you can. Entering system. Ias mists. He's not building a single one. Of course. Alright. So this is going to take even longer now. But I'm going to have to do it this way. Because it's the only place that's got any hole parts. Alright. Medium. Baldrick. Low preset. A four. Gosh, I've been spending a fortune ever since I've gotten on here. Okay, so the vultures are being built. Nice. I thought you were missing whole parts, game. So having the Baldrick's out here isn't going to be a bad thing either. So we should be fine. Switch your anchor space. Thank you. 
Right. So, let's see about our new Baldrix that we just got. Alright, there we go. Got everyone set for uh, trading for build storage. So now we've got that arranged. So far though, I do have to admit, I am enjoying the DLC. I mean, it's slower than playing X4 Star Wars, of course, because of everything slower. I mean, nothing has the the nice speeds that we're used to with the X4 Star Wars mod. Which, the other thing is too, guys, I do need to mention, is uh, they are working on a patch for uh, Cradle of Humanity. Uh, they're also going to be reverting Xenon back to default, from what I understand. I don't know if that's entirely true, but from what I understand, uh, they're going to be... Uh, that's mainly because of I started with one Baldrick that was doing manual trades, my rules. Um, and then I was also doing missions. So, like, uh, perfect example. It's like, we're already at reputation of, yeah, 19 with Terran uh, Protectorate. And I've only done two missions. Like, that's it. I've only done two missions. If you ignore the starter, uh, mission that you start with, with the, uh, satellites. Like, if you ignore that mission, uh, yeah, I've only done two missions of the Terran Protector. I'm already at plus 19. It's so, like, I've been just doing mission, 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 mission. But, uh, I really want to do the campaign stuff for the stream. And it's a lot slower than what I was doing yesterday. Because as you can see right now, it's like 140,000 credits due from trades. So, I mean, yeah. And that's how, because uh, I actually, uh, at my peak before I bought the large freighter, uh, I was sitting at like 38 million. Yeah, I was playing this pretty much all day yesterday. I was having a blast doing it too, so. So like I just had YouTube playing up on my left screen. I'm just sitting here just playing the game, just letting it do its thing. Doing my manual trades to get auto trades set up. I've talked about this in the past too. It's like if you ever start a brand new start and you have, um, here's the other thing too. Um, what I was saying is if you're literally starting a new playthrough, and I've talked about this with the Christmas ships uh, video, is if you if you do your new starts right and most starts start with like a little bit of money like not much that you not enough to buy a new ship or even upgrade your own ship farm crystals farm crystals you can make a ton of money off of crystals so quickly you just gotta have the patience for it and the determination of finding the crystals and everything like that it's like uh the first two hours of this save was just nothing but crystal farming. When I sold everything, I started out with like basically, I think it was at uh, like 12.8 million by the time I sold all my crystals. So, I mean, that's a pretty nice start. And then just running missions after that, buying a few fighters here and there. Uh, bought, like I spent uh, 2 million on traders, on trading transports, and then just started just doing auto trades with them. Well, not auto trades, but uh, manual trades. And those Terran MREs and protein paste, you can make a pretty penny because they take no, um, they take no, uh, like, containment storage whatsoever. Like, they don't fill up cargo capacities nearly as much as other materials would. And the uh, price differences on them are like 50 to 100 each. So, like, I was making mad money off of that. So that's why I set up the, the, the Terran MREs and the protein paste for my auto traders.
And I have no idea what silicon carbide is. I just saw it in the auto trader list. I was like, hmm, alright. Let's try the silicon carbide. Alright, have you started building yet? Nope. Because no one's trading with them. No one. And apparently I lost my builder. There we go. No idea how I lost my builder. Alright, let's check information real quick. Ah, finally. Some people are getting some stuff. <laughs> Patience isn't your forte. It's not for many people. I like to think I'm pretty patient. I'm not one I'm waiting on like a friend for an online game or something like that. I'm not patient at all. But, uh... When it comes to single player games or biding my time for something, I think I'm pretty patient. Either that or I'm just lazy. It's one of the two. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Give, guys, give me one second. Uh, I'm not going to put it in the be right back screen, but uh, I'll be right back in two secs. Um, yeah, I got to take care of something real quick. I apologize. Real world stuff. So give me a second, guys. I'll be right back. Entering Grand Exchange for All right, sorry about that, guys. Sorry. Had to take something family-related. Apologize. All right. So anyways, where was I? Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. So we're trying to get that back up. So... Entering exchange free. Did he even start a construction? You know what else I'm going to do? Just because I can. I'm going to add these solar cells on there. No, I got a better idea. Let's take this. Let's move this out of the way for a sec. And let's get the cross on there. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Like that cross. That cross is pretty cool. Alright. So let's go with the production modules again. Yeah, 
I really like how small these solar cells are. That's fantastic. All right, so we need storage as well, right? And it's vertical. Oh my gosh, that is brilliant. Vertical storage. Okay, so yeah, I'm really starting to like some of these modules. I'm going to have to play around with these Terran modules. <coughs> Alright, so I think I also need to talk with Mick, uh, creator of uh, X, the lead developer for uh, X4 Star Wars. And what I'm thinking is um, seeing what uh, if, we, if there's any compatibility for the modules for Terran and uh, possibly looking at maybe how'd that get rotated? You know, I'm going to do that because that looks kind of cool. Um, and see if there's uh, we can put the Star Wars weapons on these modules. That would be pretty cool. Because if we can get these to work with the Star Wars stuff, oh, that's going to be incredible. Wow, that, that just went up in price. We'll worry about that later. Yeah, we'll worry about that later. All right, close the menu. One of those docks first. <laughs> yeah, we're starting to run low on monies. Alright. So these guys are still in Mars picking up stuff, apparently. These guys are still picking up stuff in Profit Center Alpha, apparently. Alright. So... Hey, he arrived. Pull you over to the station. All right, Kestrel is waiting. Let's have him explore. And we'll have him explore out here, too. It looks like we're going to be doing lots of trades with the Talati. Yeah, we definitely need to explore out here because we got Hall Part Factory, Turret Component Factory, and Claytronics. Be nice as a Claytronics out here. Lots of Hull Parts though, ship technology as well. Yeah, so we're just going to go ahead and do that one as well. God, see, this is where I'd really like to be trading with. Oh man, I'm going to have to do so many Aragon missions. Uh, uh, that's going to be a lot of missions. Oh, that's, yeah, that's definitely going to be a lot of missions. Wow. Oh. Okay, well, I got my work cut out for my own single-player campaign. All right, so is there any questions? Anybody in chat that has questions about DLC? Uh, things coming to X4 Star Wars before we start wrapping this up. Uh, if you guys want to talk about anything X4 Star Wars mod-related or Cradle of Humanity-related... By all means, guys, ask as many questions as you'd like. And another thing, too, guys, um, for those of you who are watching, the Star Wars will resume on Sunday uh, with our current playthrough. But just bear in mind, it is going to be the last one for that series. We'll be starting a new playthrough starting next week.
All right. So we've got our ships out there. God, it's going to take forever. Yeah, let's just make this easier. Let's just remove all orders and go buy some more advanced satellites. Let's just buy as many as we can. Uh, 10. Let's go 12 on the dot. All right, so we'll add that and then confirm. this all that remains find lock box collect items deliver items no all right Start on Utopia. Get these out of the way. Tires on you. No. So let's finish off with these. There we go. Those are all installed. I'd love it if you just hurry up and finish up with that dock. Golly, there's so many trades to be done out in this area. What's going on, Brian Mars? Yeah, no Star Wars for today. Uh, we only got about nine minutes left in the stream. Uh, we're just looking at Cradle of Humanity, and I was just asking the chat uh, just a second ago. Um... If uh, there's any questions that you guys have about X4 Star Wars or Cradle of Humanity DLC, be more than willing to answer them now. Um, we'll be resuming our regular Star Wars episodes uh, on Sunday, just as per usual, Brian. But uh, it's going to be the last episode for that specific series. We're going to be making a whole new playthrough just to get in the, uh, uh, the, the DLC into the Star Wars. Now, the other thing is, too, is it's not recommended. If you do have the Star Wars mod, do not play it with Cradle of Humanity. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. The only reason why I'm doing it is because of, one, for my own purposes, and two, um, also helps find bugs for uh, the dev team to look at and try to fix. Yeah, the, the blue and white, I think, looks really, really good. It's actually one of the new paint jobs, so 
Um, give me a second. Where is the shipment I'm on? Castro Vanguard. Okay. So, redesign. All right. So, I am running the Utopia. But the new ones that came uh, with the DLC is the Soul Set, Soul Set Dapple, Soul Set Canopy, Cerulean uh, Utopia, Azurus Utopia, Utopia, which is what we're running, uh, Violicious, and then several different uh, colors of the Violicious. So, yeah, like all of the new paint jobs are pretty cool. Those are the new ones. Stuck in a ditch waiting for my buddy to yank me out of three feet of snow. <laughs> I actually know what that's like. Um, even though I live on the East Coast uh, in Virginia, I live up in the mountains. So, like, I know exactly what that's like. And I also know what it's like yanking people out of uh, ditches anyways because of uh, North Carolina is a very muddy state. And that's where I'm actually from is North Carolina. So, I'm used to seeing that. Good luck, Brian. The market right now for graphics cards. I've been trying to buy a graphics card since uh, December last year. And why am I getting shot by that laser tower? And of course, AI piloting. Sometime this week, man. There we go. Oh, you're just going to crash in the station again. Nice. I have no idea what that kind of reset was. Alright. Yeah, I've been trying to buy a graphics card since uh, December of last year. And uh, it's like, there's been so many times that like I, I've got the place order button. I click place order and then it comes back saying, sorry, we're out of stock. It's like, really? Are you kidding me? And then Forbes came out with an article yesterday, no, not yesterday, sorry, three days ago. Um, and it specifically says that uh, expect graphics card shortages all the way up until September of 2021. It's like, I'm not going to wait till September. It's like, I'm on two different discords right now for notifications just for um, getting uh, notified for when a 3070 is in stock. That's what I'm aiming for is getting a 3070. Um, I know there's plenty of people also going to be looking at spend, trying to spend their stimulus on uh, getting uh, new computer parts as well. So expect shortages uh, across the board, Brian, for computer parts. And you can blame all of it on cryptocurrency miners. All on crypt cryptocurrency miners. They're at fault. They really are. Like... It, in all honesty, and I had this conversation with a buddy yesterday, NVIDIA just needs to hurry up and create a card specifically for cryptocurrency mining. The second they come, up, they come out with a graphics card that is designed specifically for cryptocurrency mining, then all of us gamers can finally be able to buy a card at release that's not sold out immediately. Because when you've got two huge markets for graphics cards, both trying to buy graphics cards at the same time, they're going to be out of stock for a long time. So that's the problem. And are you done yet? Yep, you're done. Sweet. Okay, so we're going to drop one here. And then we're going to drop one up in two grand. No. Now let's drop one here. And then we'll drop one here here and we're going to drop one here so that's four yeah I need one over here as well So that's six. That leaves us with six. And that's all we can. That's all we can trade with is these guys. We can't trade with anybody else. So that's unfortunate. All right. So while he's heading on out to drop these 
satellites for our sector satellites. Uh, that's where we're going to be wrapping up the stream, guys. Um, I hopefully I see most of you guys on Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, that'll be what? Uh, 4 p.m. Pacific. But yeah, guys. I hope you guys are enjoying the new DLC. I hope you guys are enjoying uh, X4 Star Wars if you guys are running it. And I will catch you guys in the next one. If you guys are new here and you guys haven't already, go ahead and like, subscribe for me down below. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Ladies, everyone.